что, пригладил тут матку? Я вот думаю, надо, Потому что тут надо людей. всем как-то гулять. Есть расстояние. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to see you all at the session implementation of the strategy for improving financial literacy in the Russian Federation. I'm Nadezhda Groshova, uh, chief editor of my finance journal. I'm happy to be the moderator of this session, and I would like to introduce the participants of this session. Uh, Deputy Minister of Finance is Mikhail Katukov. Hello. Head of the uh, uh, Service of Protection of the Rights of Consumer, Mr. Mamuta. Alexey Gorislavsky, General Director of uh, the company Dialogue. Ksenia Paderina, journalist and financial blogger. General Director. Uh, now, Fi Guzelia Imaeva, Pavel Tulubiev, Pochta Bank, he's going to come. Yandex Go, Evgeny Sidarev. Before we start, I would like to uh, spend some time. The winners of the student Olympiad, the name was cancel, impossible to regulate. Mikhail Kotukov organized this uh, this competition as well as Maxim Chechenko. So let's greet the winners, the organizers and the winners. Where are the winners? Where are the winners? Ah, oh, here they are. Our winners. Evgeny Kapaguzov, teacher, assistant professor, head of Department of Economic Theory and Global Economy in the Omsk State University, named after Dostoevsky. He is the coach of students, winners of the Student Olympiad on Financial Literacy in 2021. A word goes to Evgenia Zhurovova. Bachelor of Economics, master student in Omsk State University, named after Dostoevsky. Congratulations. Roman Pospelov, fourth year student. Uh, at the Omsk State University, named after Dostoevsky. One photo together. Congratulations to you and to your teachers. It's a pleasure that uh, the winners today represent the city of Omsk in Siberia. So we understand there's another center for financial literacy development. This year we uh, observe very good results. All of the 85 administrative regions of Russia develop their financial re literacy, and there are competitions of that kind organized. I wish you 
great success. Keep to this point, I mean financial literacy, this may become a very interesting profession. It will, lead, it will guide you to good answers during your work. So keep to it while writing your thesis and probably PhD. Congratulations. I have something to add. Roman, Evgenia, you are, you, you've done a great job. I congratulate you for this victory, for being active. And I hope to see you soon among those who realize the project on financial literacy development. Evgeny is already part of our council. He has many ideas. And the strategy that we have was elaborated with Evgeny. I hope to see you soon while implementing this strategy. And I'll tell you that this strategy is included for strategic development of the Omsk region for the following years. So this strategy is very important in the development of the region, and I, I wish you great success. Thank you. I have so, uh, something to add. I thank Ministry of Finances for support. Roadmap has been elaborated by this ministry. Financial literacy project is a very important step. I uh, am grateful to the Moscow State University named after Lomonosov and to the strategic center which worked with the biggest universities of Russia. And the Student Olympiad contributed to education of our students. First of all, I would like to thank my teachers, all, all those who taught me, enhanced my skills and knowledge. Uh, I thank Paguzov Yevgeny Alexeyevich uh, for helping me in this Olympiad. I am grateful to the university, Moscow State University, named after Lomonosov. Uh, thank you for the lectures. And thank, I thank the organizers of this forum for this opportunity granted to a regular student of a university in Siberia to be a part of such a, a large-scale event. And myself, I'll do otherwise. I thank the organizers of the forum for this opportunity to visit Moscow and uh, take part in this forum and to see in person people whom I uh, saw only on TV. I thank Moscow State University for uh, this opportunity and for the material provided. The tasks were very interesting, the tasks to develop our competencies and skills it helped us to develop uh, our skills, uh, the ones that we couldn't develop during our regular training, the skills which are in demand in the real economy. And I also thank Evgeny Alexeyevich Kapoguzov for his mentoring, for helping me prepare for the Olympiad, for, the, for his help. And, and I thank Omsk State University all teachers who mm, taught us, uh, I thank you all for your effort. Thank you. And then I invite uh, the panelists for discussion. Uh, our first subject, financial literacy 2.0. What are the challenges uh, of the financial literacy and what are the options of solution? As you know, client-centeredness is one of the key issue that government faces. In this field, 
one of the biggest tasks is the interaction between citizens and the government. And uh, we know that in the monetary sphere, uh, there are many questions to solve. What should be done in the field of uh, financial education? Well, thank you very much, Natalia. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for choosing our session. I'm pretty sure it's going to be very fruitful for you. Certainly, life is going on. And thank you very much to our centers that have been developing the methodology, materials, and so on in order to raise awareness uh, about financial literacy for people of different age groups. Pandemic of COVID-19 introduced a number of limitations. On the other hand, it gave opportunity to boost uh, digital technologies and raise some questions and goals we have to achieve. People staying at home reduced some costs, and they were thinking, what shall we do with some spare money? And uh, it was important uh, to make right decisions, avoid mistakes. We don't understand challenges uh, that uh, Russian people faced last year, and uh, we developed a new uh, framework of competencies, and uh, we are going to fulfill it was methodologies uh, that uh, we have developed in order to share this knowledge with people. We have to find new shapes. What worked 10 years ago does not work today. So we have to find new practices and new educational uh, tools, new approaches. And to date, our stand, uh, we showed uh, how our portal is being developed. It uh, brings together the latest developments, and certainly it's going to be changed uh, in future, upgraded in future, so that uh, the problematic uh, topics uh, are sorted out, so that we can prevent uh, some mistakes in future, rather than focusing on something from the in the past. So digital. Uh, Technologies are compulsory, and integration with uh, digital systems must be done today. That's the strategy of Ministry of, um, of Finance. Until 2030, we have prepared a new version of developing new financial systems, and the project of financial literacy lays at the heart of it. Moreover, we set a very ambitious goal to transform this uh, project uh, so that it is a comprehensive pro program that boosts the culture of financial liter literacy. So I invite you to take part in this project. So we're at the start of the second stage of this very important project. I am pretty sure we are going to hold lots of meetings in order to discuss latest developments. We will use a Telegram uh, channel, and uh, we are going to stay very proactive in order to fulfill it. So what do people expect from the state? I believe that people do expect uh, transparent and easy rules of games. So they need the responses to their questions and services that will help them to avoid mistakes, that will help them to avoid uh, any fraud. They need some navigation systems because we do understand that the portal state services can be added with uh, some newest, some latest developments that allow you to make, uh, take new financial decisions, how to save your money, how to acquire a household, whether you need, want, uh, depending on, uh, on whether you want to buy an apartment or not. You should understand that uh, you shouldn't, uh, you can't invest uh, a very small amount of money if it's the only thing you have. I have a next question to Mikhail Mamute. We see that uh, there was a very large wave of fraud uh, that affected uh, lots of uh, Russian people. Now I have a feeling that uh, we actually could uh, limit it to some extent, uh, thanks to the Minister of Education, the police, uh, and uh, the central bank activities. So what do you focus on today in order to improve the situation? Well, thank you very much. I have a very short presentation that uh, will uh, show you what we have done. 
financial literacy, as we all understand, is uh, despite the friendly using approach, is a very complicated topic. In order to be successful, you have to take lots of efforts, you have to learn, and certainly there is a, a gap between your learning process and the decisions you take. Together with the Ministry of Finance, we work together as a team and also with the Ministry of Education in order to shape the vector of state development of uh, financial literacy. So we have developed a number of tools in that regard. There is a strategy mentioned by Mikhail Kotukov, and uh, we laid a very solid foundation, I believe. But if we talk about the challenges or problems that Russian uh, people, entrepreneurs face, the response to those challenges uh, has should take into account a few aspects. Uh, people should have some knowledge and transform them into some intentions. And this chain between the behavior and the knowledge is not as easy as it might seem. So we have to use uh, tools of behavior psychology and so on, because we know that people might have some knowledge, but their behavior might not be as rational as it should be. So this is a goal we have to, we want to achieve. And modern financial world is very complicated. Uh, it is evolving constantly, and we see uh, new tools that come into the market, and uh, the whole population is in integrated into the financial sector of the economy. And certainly, if we want uh, people to feel comfortable, if uh, we want people to feel protected, they must uh, use a number of mechanisms. They include such values as uh, protection from the financial markets, uh, efficient uh, fight with the fraud, and self-protection, self-defense, so that people themselves understand what they can do in order to protect their funds. We also are very concerned with uh, the equal access to financial services uh, that shall be provided to all groups of population, and the foundation of this uh, structure is education. So we have done a lot uh, in the last years. So we have uh, completed a very big project in order to upgrade uh, school educational program. And now financial literacy is uh, part of uh, this uh, curriculum. So I'm talking about mathematics, uh, geographics, and so on. And starting from 2022, those programs are going to be in integrated and uh, cover such uh, topics, uh, topics of financial literacy. And uh, this is a very big achievement without any exaggeration. But we do understand that uh, education is getting online as well as the financial sector, and uh, for we hold the uh, online lessons, uh, classes in the last uh, few years. For us, it is important that uh, such uh, classes are part uh, of uh, the uh, online education. Talking about midterm challenges, for us, it is very important that we to divide uh, goals into short-term, long-term, and mid-term. So based on the analysis uh, we have uh, carried out, we divided three big blocks, investment uh, literacy. We see mass, uh, we see lots of investors in, this, in the financial market with a very high expectations. And uh, financial cyber literacy is extremely important together with the digital literacy so that people use uh, digital tools and can protect themselves when they face uh, some efforts of fraud that uh, unfortunately take place and they are going to take place in the future because we do understand there is a balance of good deals and bad deals uh, in life. In that regard, we have to work in order to provide good uh, base for the future and we should provide, uh, we should protect those uh, who use uh, 
financial services today. So there is a site of financial culture that uh, was established a few years ago. There are about one million uh, subscribers there. There is this online um, app of the central bank of uh, Russia where you can ask questions 24-7. And uh, we also uh, cooperate with bloggers, social networks, social media. And I think such a multi-channel approach, a omni-channel approach uh, will help to make it a success so that uh, we inform uh, people on time. Mikhail Kotikov mentioned that we cannot uh, forecast the future precisely, but we have to stay relevant uh, and we have to respond. We have to respond uh, to the challenge, uh, respond to the challenges that are set by life. And uh, I would say that we won't be able to predict the future for 10 years time, but we can at least shape uh, the future that we would like to have. And we should be ready that uh, changes in the environment uh, will make us adjust to those changes. But staying efficient uh, is uh, what uh, we have to take in mind. If there are no any changes in mainstream, we will see that uh, interim interfaces uh, will be part of our life. Uh, people communicate more and more with bots, with uh, automated programs, and uh, certainly uh, customers are not as protected uh, as previously because uh, people can make some behavioral mistakes and thus in artificial intelligence help us to protect uh, people from um, instant uh, solutions uh, Therefore, mainstream and artificial intelligence use of customized services, use of mechanisms of uh, quality control is uh, are the ch global challenges uh, that have to be addressed. And the future will show us what other challenges uh, we will have to face in future. Well, thank you very much, Mikhail. We do understand that challenges and problems uh, have to be addressed by the marketplace. So what about uh, research uh, of be what uh, conclusions uh, do we have to operate? So how financial services are consumed uh, by the Russian uh, consumers. Well, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. So what is our di dialogue? We are a federal operator of uh, the uh, feedback from uh, the Russia's population. So we monitor what uh, Russian citizens are right in order to inform uh, Russian authorities of uh, things that's going on. So previously, our dialogue uh, focused on so sociology and uh, measured uh, perspective of Russian people to financial literacy. So financial literacy is at the heart of our attention, and it is one of the most important uh, things because traditionally, the number of uh, reclaims uh, or cl claims um, complaints uh, in. Uh, on the internet are such topics as education, roads, some infrastructural issues. As for financial fraud, such complaints uh, were not uh, numerous before, but with the growth of such of cyber frauds, uh, we uh, the number of such claims went up. And as for internet sociology. We should understand that this sociology uh, takes place on the internet, and uh, on the internet, people are either more pessimistic or more optimistic. So we should uh, take that into account. Therefore, the figures I'm going to share with you might not be very accurate, but uh, the share of uh, socially favorable answers might be a bit higher than it really is. So Mikhail mentioned that financial literacy includes internet literacy. We quite agree with that. To see difference, the difference uh, between uh, 
the So sometimes uh, people just do not understand the difference uh, between uh, technical literacy and uh, financial literacy. So overall, I would say that uh, the level of literacy has to be improved. So what did we find out with our research? We have 42 customers that estimate uh, their level of literacy, financial literacy, as quite high. So I think uh, people are being very optimistic. 30 people say their level of financial literacy is somewhere in the middle, so they believe there is something I might not know, and uh, the rest say that uh, the level of knowledge is quite low and uh, they have to upgrade their knowledge. So Russian people are quite optimistic, and this is why cyber fraud uh, is uh, so popular. 46 percent uh, want to improve their knowledge in financial markets. Sorry, I don't have a presentation uh, to show you the numbers on screen, but on the portal, uh, on our financial portal, you actually can find those figures, so it's no problem. Uh, those who are more interested can uh, find them, so no problems. Uh, do not, uh, Alexei, do not worry, people will get them. So I won't uh, share with you all the figures if you can uh, find them on the portal. So the most important thing is as follows. Five uh, top topics are ways uh, to get uh, social security payments. That's what people are looking for on the Internet. Protection from uh, fraud dealers, indexation of uh, pensions, and 13 percent uh, think how to save up money. So. You will see that uh, it's a quite a low number, and then information that people that banks do not share with you when they uh, suggest, uh, offer you a credit card. For those uh, who are in promotion of some knowledge, uh, ask themselves uh, what shall be done done in order to improve the knowledge. Long reads, for example. Uh, articles that uh, give you thorough information on the topics you are looking for, or educational video. It's a very easy button on it. in a search engine. Uh, you can uh, ask a question and get a video in return. Then expert comments, expert videos, uh, speaking heads as we call them, and infographics. But that is attracted to only 6% of people in all social medias, like Instagram, Facebook, and so on. They are all been involved. That figure was very impressive for me because it went up dramatically. 93% of people pay on the internet uh, various goods and services, which and uh, that probably uh, what we achieved in the last year. Certainly, uh, this uh, re the research. Uh, the results of which I'm sharing with you today was made in 2020, last year, but we are going to hold it annually in order to have more precise uh, figures. The most interesting thing is uh, what changes uh, have taken place. Well, at the same time, as you see, almost 100 percent of customers pay for their services online, services or goods online. And if you have no financial literacy, you are at the risk zone. Sociologists are divided among uh, certain groups of uh, people. In each questionnaire, uh, there were a number of questions, and uh, by the time you answer the 20th question, you are not really focused on. So we try to calculate. to calculate how many people are interested in uh, improving financial literacy. So they estimate the knowledge uh, of uh, financial knowledge uh, quite well, but they want uh, to improve it. About 17 percent are concerned with their, level f with their level of financial knowledge. And uh, those who have debts, they have no savings, uh, they live on loans, and they're only interested on in how to get out of that uh, vicious circle. Nine percent of people are not interested in anything, and they're not going to 
do anything in that regard. 7% are so-called sorry people who really want the, that analyzed uh, information and then first and four percent are successful people that have considerable savings and but they would love to have more in that regard and uh, a very small percentage uh, estimates their knowledge of uh, level of knowledge as good <coughs> How can we convey this message to people who are interested uh, to know, to enhance their financial literacy? Answer, offline sociology gives us a marker. The marker useful for those who, who produces this material. We wanted to know which category of people uses which material to learn. So let's take women, 18, 24 years of age. They prefer short Instagram video to learn. When we understand who prefers what kind of information, it becomes clear. Question, we have people, we have a person who knows how to do it the best way a answer yeah it should be um, a very good narrative in very simple language because if something is not clear there are finance there's financial fraud in the internet uh, financial pyramids and so on and so forth Question, there are people who use financial fraud to promote themselves. Answer, it's true, and we see uh, a bigger, a big number of young people who get involved into these pyramids. Why? Because the scammers are very charismatic. They know how to involve young people into their work. However, these young people could have become our financial bloggers, honest ones. Question. There used to be a page on Gosuslugi portal saying how to tell the scammer. And now I would like to give the floor to a person who knows how to give information in a concise way. In his Instagram, he has more than one million subscribers. Ksenia, what are the questions your subscribers usually ask? Answer. Hello. Uh, it's, it's weird. I need to... Uh, look that way. I have a blog dedicated to finances, and I um, talk about state governmental programs for support, and my name is Ksenia Paderina. The topics that are very relevant for people uh, are reflected in the questions my subscribers ask. It's not me who invents the subjects or topics of my uh, my blog. No, I have subscribers asking questions, uh, asking, tell me about this or that. For example, our president uh, offered uh, an allowance for families with children, and now my subscribers write to me, Xenia, tell me, is it a scam or is it true? Give us more information about it. Question, that such a level of trust. Answer, that's right. And uh, what I also do is translation from banking language into regular language. It's true, women prefer to, wa to watch pictures. And women represent uh, the majority of the audience in the Instagram, but not only women prefer pictures, men too. The easiest language you use, the easier it is to convey your message. Question, what's your strategy? 
What should there be uh, to gain trust of your audience? Answer. First thing, why people trust me is the reputation. You need to have good reputation, as simple as that. When I started my blog, it was 2016, and I didn't have one million subscribers at start. Their number grew gradually. I was in my eternity leave, and one of my friends told me, go and uh, create a page of your own. And I uh, was thinking uh, what uh, I wanted to write about. You know, my professional life is not connected to finances. And I thought about things that I would want to write about. And I came to finances because it's interesting. I like discounts, cashbacks, sales, and everything. I like having uh, an option to buy uh, something expensive but at a lower price that my neighbor would buy. Here I can find a discount, there I can find a cashback opportunity, and uh, more than that, I can find uh, fiscal reimbursement or whatever. It was very interesting. And by that time, I had three mortgages reimbursed, and I had some experience in this field. And you know, people, friends around me, before taking a mortgage, they uh, turned to me asking where to start, where to go, how to avoid scammers, what are the tricks, what are, what are what are the difficulties and so on and so forth. And I told uh, to my friends what I knew. I gave them consultations and all that, my experience, my personal experience, turned into a blog. I wrote there what I knew, what I found out, my stories. And then I asked my friend, how would I know what to write about? And she told me, write different things, and then you will see feedback from your audience, and you will know what to write about. People will react to your po posts. And it was true. People asked me questions, shared their experience, asked how to avoid trips, and so on and so forth, traps. And I understood that my blog was our common fruit. This blog accumulates experience of thousands of people. Question, is like user experience? Answer, yes, that's right. For example, a person wants to take mortgage loan in a bank. And to know what to expect, this person would need to go to this bank, go to the forum, to a forum, read a lot of articles and opinions, and this will take time and effort. But I have read many stories by my subscribers. I have my own experience, and I can share this common experience and help others. I have many bank workers among my subscribers, and, and probably they are not interested in my blog. They know it all already. However, those bank workers know their particular field of work, but they don't know what happens in other departments, in other banks. You know your field of work, and the blog is a place where People share their experience from different banks, from different departments, with different clients. So the blog is a common platform of experience. Question. Thank you for your experience. So I understand that reputation is the most answer. Yes, that's true. And it's very important to be useful. Question. I would like to discuss what Ksenia has said. Let's turn to statistics. Kozelia Maeva will 
share her experience, she will tell us what f these figures mean about financial literacy. Thank you for this opportunity. Good afternoon to everyone. I represent NAFI, uh, Research and Development Center in the field of financial behavior of people. I would like to focus on digital financial literacy. We have mentioned that already. I will share with you our results. The year 2020 was a catalyzer of digital services development. 65% of population use digital banking in a very active way. This percentage grows even further and people use their smartphone as a digital wallet where everything is accumulated. State services are more available now and there are uh, and there are opportunities for scammers as well. Every second uh, Russian faced fraud. I think you all have heard, have got these phone calls from scammers and many people lost their money due to these frauds. Electronic commerce is one of biggest sectors of trade and the issue is cyber awareness however only one out of three russians know that it is me and not everybody else who am responsible for my finances the other people think that it's the that the state and the government are responsible for their personal finances. We often face that people say the following, young people grew up during the internet epoch. That's true, but it doesn't mean financial literacy. So let's focus on the digital financial literacy. I'll tell you as a researcher, we understand what financial literacy is. We know how to measure it. We have m methodology to measure it. We know what it, what it means, what digital literacy means. You can go to the website, Digital Citizen, and you can test your digital literacy as a whole and you can get recommendations what to learn. However, digital financial literacy globally is discussed in the field of personalization. We need to personalize this aspect. This is how we will be able to measure it and to develop it. It's a new phenomenon in modern life. So here is the QR code. Digital literacy is more advanced than financial literacy. You can see the numbers, the figures. And we try to measure the digital financial literacy. We have a framework of competencies which should be included into educational programs and content. What are the indices of digital financial literacy? Knowledge of financial services, digital ones, use of applications to plan the budget, and also you need to understand the risks while using digital financial applications. 65% use banking uh, digital programs applications. However, one out of five Russians may be considered as a competent digital financial user. Digital environment 
makes the gap even bigger between the ones, the advanced users and beginners. So we see the biggest amount of people who are not very literate in the digital finance. These are older people and low-income people, every second person of villages. So it's a big challenge and we need to work with it. We need to adopt the channels of education. We need to adapt the content in order to even the situation. Financial institutions also play uh, an important role. We need to create such institutions together with clients in order to make the service affordable and available for everybody. Thank you for your attention. And we're going to continue our uh, research work. It was a pleasure to share with you our results. Thank you. As we can see, uh, older generation represents the ones with lower digital financial literacy. Sometimes they uh, they often don't use all the functions in their smartphones. They don't know about many functions. And Pavel uh, Tulyev will uh, talk about that in more details. He is the, uh, the uh, deputy director of Pochta Bank. Good afternoon. I'm going to talk about older people. Uh, these people do not want to consume information quickly. On the contrary, young people are ready to watch uh, only short videos. More than 20 seconds, they get bored. Older people prefer slow motion. They need more time to process information received, to think it over. Elderly people have fear facing new technologies. They don't want to uh, look outdated uh, compared to the young people. Elderly people use their own experience. And if the technologies contradict their uh, experience, they are not willing to accept new information. We uh, observed the following. When all the people talk to bank users, they say, we are willing to trust our children, but not our grandchildren. And bank workers usually are 40 and something years old and there are other younger workers of 20 and something they they are considered as grandchildren older people are willing to trust the police and other authorities if we talk about uh, these people uh, as users of bank service, we understand that they have certain income. We see that elderly people are more willing to save money. They have m more money in their bank accounts than younger people. And they are more diligent in paying their loans. I can give you an analogy. Uh, older people used to be my grandparents. Now older people is the generation of my parents. My parents can use the internet, they can use bank, uh, plastic cards. And we see the same trend with our clients. We have more and more clients of the age 60 something and 
uh, these people use banking services more and more often. What services do they use the same as the other uh, categories of people? Uh, payments, uh, money, money transfer, and others. They use uh, distant banking services. They use applications in their smartphones. What about Pochta Bank? In order to improve operations with retired people, first of all, we have a learning course for our employees that teaches them how to communicate with uh, the elderly people, to speak in a slow manner, to explain clear ways, and so on. We have a dedicated hotline for the retired people. As uh, you understand, uh, there are some certain requirements uh, in the hotline operations. How many, uh, how many calls uh, have to be process processed in certain uh, timeline, and so on. So we have special, uh, specific requirements uh, for this dedicated line. When uh, our customers open uh, a retired uh, account. At Pochta Bank, we help uh, them in order to understand how to operate, how it is operated. Therefore, we help them to upload application and we explain how it works. Also, we are carrying out a pilot project that uh, helps uh, to educate uh, retired people how to work as uh, a state uh, service portal. And a very important thing done by the Pochta Bank. As uh, we have seen before, uh, equal access shall be provided for all citizens of Russia. Many elderly people live in rural areas, and uh, certainly it doesn't make sense uh, to open an affiliate uh, there. So we decided to open uh, additional offices at uh, 10,000 points uh, of banking services in uh, very small towns, and uh, then we will have 30,000 service centers uh, where people can get basic financial services, open an account, have an access uh, to banking uh, services, upload their biometric data, and then uh, get any banking product digitally. Talking about financial literacy, we should remember about our uh, work with uh, retired people. We should uh, raise the awareness uh, regarding banking products. And today, as of today, we have uh, carried out uh, more than 7,000 offline classes for the retired people. For them, it is very important uh, to have such offline communication as it helps to uh, have a better knowledge absorption. Today, perhaps some of you have seen that in the moment we had uh, the Ministry of Finance at our stand, and uh, we have launched a all Russian test of financial literacy. It has uh, 13 cases that uh, in general describe uh, situations uh, where uh, people are caught by the fraud dealers. Various calls uh, from uh, some test uh, systems and so on and so forth. This uh, test uh, will be carried out uh, at the Pochta Bank. We are going to select the winners at the monthly basis, at the weekly basis. And we are going to select a special award at social media, so track our news. Uh, a very interesting gift is waited for those uh, who will, desc who will uh, describe uh, our session in the best possible way. The gift is very interesting. So how do we protect our customers? Well, uh, banking systems are protected at a very high level, so usually fraud dealers do not attack banks. So what uh, we did in the past, uh, we collect biometric data in divisions, and then we check biometrics uh, uh, distantly, remotely. 
there are some high risk uh, operations uh, when customers are, be, are attacked. In Pochta Bank, uh, it is impossible to close a bank account. Uh, it, you can do it only person with uh, showing your biometric data. So that is a very efficient way to protect uh, our customers, other and defraud systems and informational support, communications carried out by bank and social media in person in a push the bank app and so on. Well, the common mistakes are made by the retirees are very common. They trust uh, to the fraud dealers. They share their personal data and they use the same uh, passwords for any account, for all accounts. Well, we know that to write PIN code at the other, uh, on the back uh, side of your uh, banking card. And the, at my finance uh, portal, you can check your level of knowledge and in terms of financial literacy. We do understand that elderly people is a very important social group, but there is another group uh, we take decisions every day, we influence our economy, we earn money and spend money. So how to get through to people that work and they absorb information, uh, consume information in a different way. So I would like to give the floor to Evgeny Sindirov so that he shares the results of our joint project with you. Well, Pavel, I'm very intrigued by the prize, by the gift you are offering. Well, I will tell you a bit later, okay? The prize is, uh, the gift is outstanding, just you have to trust me. Is it an automobile or what? Uh, I will tell you later. Well, we love cars, we love cars, that's for sure. Well, let me tell you about uh, the course of financial literacy for our uh, drivers partners that we launched uh, this spring together with uh, experts from the Minister of Finance. That course was prepared together with the Center of Financial Literacy of the Ministry of Finance. And I would like to express gratitude to our colleagues from the Ministry of Finance. What can you learn in, at that course? First of all, how to plan your expenditure, how to choose an insurance, how to take a loan, how to choose a bank or a banking card and how to loan a tax, uh, taxation, specifics of taxation uh, program. The, another focus uh, is on how to use your money, what financial tool to use uh, and uh, so on. The course lasts uh, two weeks, two days every day, so it's it's certainly held online, so there is some text uh, information, there are some videos at each topic, and then uh, upon completion, uh, a questionnaire has to be filled. We believe uh, it's a very efficient tool, a very engaging, and it really helps to get a good level of knowledge. The course attracted a uh, lot of attention among taxi drivers. We can say it's a very big community that uh, exists online and offline. There is a Telegram channel, there are some groups uh, in social media, and they discuss uh, lots of questions. Uh, there, there are even some international events uh, that's going on. So uh, that's uh, certainly a very interesting story. And uh, we can say that we actually have very positive feedback so far. As of the, September, the 1st of September, we have launched five out of some seven planned lectures. And 20% uh, of our partners, taxi drivers, that are in Yandex uh, taxi system at least uh, watched one lecture. 10,000 uh, drivers have uh, seen all five lectures available. And an average uh, 
grade, uh, they, give, uh, they got 6.7 6. out of uh, 7 grades. Well, dwelling on this subject, I would like to say a few words about uh, social security, a new digital platform for uh, employment. We believe the future will uh, be linked uh, to financial literacy and uh, insuring insurances due to the digitalization. There are lots of new industries, new platforms, new business models, and as a result, uh, we see new ways of employment, self-employed people account for a very big number of uh, economy of digital platforms in Yandex. At Yandex, we have more than 500 self-employed people linked to this platform, registered as a program where they get orders for taxi trips and Yandex food, Yandex market, and as the services have a very high demand. As for Yandex Food and the Yandex Market, more than 80% of those who cooperate with us are self-employed. And uh, at Yandex, so we believe the new uh, so support programs for self-employed are quite unique, and uh, we launched uh, an extended uh, insurance program for self-employed uh, partners that uh, can uh, be uh, can involve a payment of two million rubles uh, in terms of uh, in case of an accident, and uh, we also provide uh, free of charge uh, law advice. We believe uh, that uh, a better insurance literacy is a very important tool that can, that help to create our new advantages. We value that the Ministry of uh, Labor is ready to cooperate in that regard in order to come up with new digital decisions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Evgeny. Mikhail, what about you? How do you what is your point of view on this uh, experience and what shall be done to improve such uh, digital courses? Well, I uh, was uh, very much ple I was pleased uh, with those figures and uh, that solutions that digital platforms offer today. I have a question to Yandex. Do you understand uh, these uh, statistics uh, covers uh, the Russian Federation, all regions of the Russian Federation? Yes. For us, it is uh, very important to know to this uh, forum brought together lots of uh, repre representatives of uh, the Russian regions. Our, the second uh, part of the session will be uh, devoted on the best practices, practices uh, developed, in, uh, developed at the regional level and a very high coverage and very high penetration via digital platforms are seen, uh, in particular at Yandex. Yandex is a partner of our pilot pro of our pilot project and it would be great uh, to see that such success stories uh, are, a, are a joint results of uh, our joint uh, are a, 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 a result of our joint work so please share your experience uh, let's act together because uh, today's conversation is an offline meeting after such a long break. So, break. So, it's a great uh, to regard the opportunities that lay ahead and uh, to promote uh, such uh, tools in order to improve uh, the results. So, so such educational programs uh, could uh, be more profound and more superficial. It doesn't really matter. The most important is that we move forward. For us. It is very important to stay proactive because we are all going to be uh, co-authors of uh, this uh, project and as a right uh, in represent correct representation, proper representation of the programs is extremely important because that what attracts people's um, attention. 
Did you see the tracks of self-esteem? So such trackers uh, can be used uh, as uh, a way to provide certain materials. Yes, I'm pretty uh, sure that is going to work out. And Ksenia mentioned a very important thing. The, so the, we have good uh, partners, bloggers, but some of them uh, take advantage of uh, illiteracy of uh, Russian people trying to make money in a very dishonest way. So for us, it's very important to divide high quality content, content uh, from fake content. This is why we established uh, a United Portal. It's an official resource uh, that shall be promoted, and uh, we need uh, feedback uh, of how efficient it is. Uh, we, sh we want to use uh, opportunities uh, of our partners and uh, therefore, uh, I believe uh, we touched a very important uh, topics. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your cases. Uh, I do understand for both Yandex, Pochta Bank, and so on. Uh, these are not just sponsor contracts, but uh, uh, this is a start of a new uh, labor relationship. And so, 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 therefore, thank you very much uh, for your efforts. If you comments uh, from my side. I I absolutely agree with Mikhail Kotsikov. Dear colleagues, we should understand that uh, within 10 years uh, we entered a new reality. A digital reality is being shaped today, uh, and the Internet today uh, plays a very important role, and it influences uh, people's behavior. It's a very different uh, way of communication that is very typical for digital reality. I quite agree that we can benefit from this new reality given that we use proper tools, platforms, bloggers, and so on. Those who are interested to improve uh, people's uh, future, but uh, there could be a negative uh, trend at the same time. So our communication with the digital platforms like Yandex and so on is very important to balance state uh, social interests. And we are going to uh, take a systematic approach in that regard. As for educational programs, I can say on the internet, if you enter in a search engine uh, digital uh, literacy, you will find lots of uh, answers that get in you nowhere. So we launched a very a special mechanism of accreditation for educational programs in financial literacy. So it's a, a trusted environment where people can uh, get high quality content, uh, but certainly we have to develop it uh, continuously. Otherwise, we might lose uh, the time and uh, on proper ideas will be transmitted. There is one more important uh, thing uh, is involvement of young people in uh, this uh, agenda. We have here deputy of uh, the region of Chuvasha, Oleg Nikolaev. Oleg, the floor is you. Could you share with us uh, how you engage young people into these processes and what they are interested in in the first uh, place? Dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm very pleased to see all of you here. I'm, uh, I would like to share with you a case from uh, Chuvasha. Uh, the region of Chuvasha is very interested in uh, improving financial literacy, and uh, such work uh, has been carried out in our republic uh, at, at a continuous way. We started uh, that work in 20, uh, 2008 when financial literacy or was just at the very start of its development. So we did and uh, we held a number of events in order to promote electronic payments. Uh, we uh, did a game of financial football. We organized a game of financial football. And uh, we involved uh, participation of educational centers at each uh, level, uh, school, universities, and so on. Last year, we came up with an initiative and signed a an agreement between the Republic Ministry of Finance, Central Bank of Russia, and Association of Bank of, of the Bank of. 
In parallel, we work on a program to promote financial literacy in the framework of um, a state program. And it was necessary to provide financing and system approach to this work. This number of measures allowed us shortly, within one year, to promote events, promote activities in the field of financial literacy. What we achieved in this work, there were many experts involved from the Ministry of Finances and others. Good contribution was made by the organizations in the Chuvash Republic. Thanks to that, I'll tell you several figures. I'll give you several figures. 85% of school children, uh, and it is 120,000 of school children, were involved in such activities. Uh, many young people from universities as well. This year, we organized different activities such as uh, connoisseurs of stock market like a competition. And these activities allowed us to see what, what the, what's important for students. And this kind of work will be continued. What we found interesting was the case when we organized an event called Literacy on Transportation and Finances. Uh, for example, in the public transport, there was uh, some kind of information provided. So we need to prepare such content. We started to provide these events to organize such events uh, as well as uh, other regular events. There is an event which is called Moy Gorod. My city. During which we organize um, different activities. For example, three days of uh, discussion between young people concerning financial literacy. So uh, th these activities was about practice. Then we organized what we call quantorium. They take several days up to one week. It's like a marathon, financial marathon. It is called uh, Confidence for Tomorrow. We hope that uh, Mikhail Kutukov and Mikhail Mamuta will participate in our activities as well. We organize a seminar in order to present what has been done recently. In order to attract older people, there is another difficult task. And in order to attract them, we organized what we called transformation of uh, social centers and libraries. There's a library. You know, there are about 10 libraries like that, which act as a digital space. You can uh, come and read a book, as usually, but in this space, people can organize different activities, different events. People can uh, take books and read. But there is also some space where, where you can communicate, where you can discuss. And also, there are rooms for 
financial literacy courses for elderly people. Such libraries are transformed into such information spaces all around our republic. And uh, this education, financial literacy courses, are very affordable. What is more, there is another place for education, uh, such as social center. We have transformed five social centers. We transformed them into uh, educational centers. In these centers, elderly people can come and do different activities. And among the activities we organize, there are lectures on financial literacy. As a result, I can give you several figures. Last year, our team of elderly Chuvash people, they participated in a competition in uh, digital financial literacy, and they uh, took the first place. Three hundred and fifteen people participated. Among them, they come from uh, fourteen regions, and one hundred and five of these people come from uh, the Chuvash Republic. So you can see how active our elderly people are. Different banks participated in uh, these programs as well. And to conclude, I'll tell you that I would like to express some proposals. We consider it reasonable to reconsider the method of analytics. We saw some results of research. Some of them are used to estimate the level of financial literacy of our population. It is clear that uh, these parameters of estimation are different, and I think we need to work more on methodology to elaborate uh, a common approach, which would allow us to uh, evaluate in an even way our population and to understand the situation. This will allow us to move further in a confident way. What is more, active involvement in the field of financial literacy enhancement of non-profit organizations. They work actively already, but today they uh, are separated from the state's support. However, Mr. Mishustin today mentioned uh, this initiative, and I reiterate it. Third proposal of mine is that the internet is mentioned regularly. What about the internet? There are channels which people trust. And, you know, these resources, resources which are trusted, they are websites. If we go to a website, uh, we will find that the information may be, may be chaotic. It may be expressed in uncomprehensible language, official language. So. Central bank website is good, but it, it should provide information in a simple language. Thank you very much. Such a resource, such a portal we have launched today. Question. Your experience is impressive. You were among the first regions in this in this field. So thank you for your proposals, and we are ready to discuss them. We assume everything you say. We would like to come uh, and uh, talk to the people in person. 
What about the methodology? We will talk about it in the second part of our session. For today, we included the order issued by the Ministry of the Finances. This order includes two parameters, how to promote financial literacy. It's just uh, a phrase, but we need to elaborate content to to implement this methodology. Of course, there are different kinds of evaluation. How do we assess a person whether he is financially literate or illiterate? So you are right. We need to, to elaborate um, um, strict parameters. Thank you for your remarks. I am also grateful for the, these remarks. It's very important and interesting how it works in the regions. I have things to add. You cooperate with the Ministry of Finances. Your interaction is of a very high level. And I have to say that the majority of events organized are carried out together with the Ministry of Finances. This is a common event. And in this format, we can reveal the strong and weak points. And oh, I want to point out that independent research is still needed. We may reveal useful points which will improve our state's policy. Thank you again for your work. I have a brief remark to make. So what about the financial literacy? Uh, there's infrastructure already existing. Hospitals and other municipal institutions. For them, we are ready to contribute so that uh, this financial literacy is introduced. So let's find out the way in which we, we could, uh, could do that. Thank you very much for this discussion. In uh, a couple of minutes, we will um, start our second half of our discussion which will be dedicated about um, uh, financial literacy implementation in the region. Thank you.
Good afternoon. I have just joined this marathon, and I suppose, looking at you, that you are already tired, so we need to do something not to disappoint you. We didn't have time to say that we need to be brief and to the point. We need to be interesting to one another. I'm Andrei Sharonov from Skolkova School. I'll be the moderator of this session. This session will be brief and interesting, as I hope. I will start by presenting the participants. Mikhail Kotikov, uh, Ministry of Finances. Mikhail Mamoud, uh, Service of you know, Consumer Protection. And Anatoly Gavrilenko, uh, Monitoring Council by the Association of Development of Financial uh, Literacy. Natalia Bruhan, uh, uh, Minister Financer, uh, Financial Minister in Ulyanovsk region. Uh, Ilya Bronstein, uh, Moscow region. Mikhail Sergeyevich. Ministry of Finances in the Tomsk region. I'll remind you that the key word today is the word that we can call healthy financial lifestyle, like healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle starts with um, uh, with good habits and with good food. What does this mean in the financial field? How can we move towards financial literacy? It can mean different stages, different aspects in terms of legislation, there should be regulation and limitations. We need to simply give an example which will change the motivation and then the behavior. We will start by a questionnaire. I ask you to participate in this questionnaire. Representatives of the regions will um, say, will talk about peculiarities in their regions uh, as far as financial literacy is concerned. And then we will turn to the speakers on the podium on the pa of the panel discussion. Take your smartphones. We have six options. Choose three options. The question is about key challenges. Mm. By the end 2030 in the field of financial literacy. Have you managed to open? So we have six options. And uh, you can choose one, two, and maximum three. Well, I suggest that uh, we go on. Those who haven't voted yet, uh, please do it. And I would like to give slot, uh, floor to Igor Malachov. Igor, the floor is yours. So, so tell us about your specific approach in this big uh, topic. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, 
Thank you very much uh, for the chance to introduce our digital platform. Well, we developed a very interesting digital platform I would like to share uh, with you today. So we started that project uh, 20, in 2010 in order to improve uh, financial literacy of uh, the local population. So we established a local council. Could you? Could I get my slides on the screen? Please uh, continue, and your slides will be switched on soon. All right. So we established a regional center of financial literacy for each uh, target audience, uh, children, students, working group, entrepreneurs, retirees, and volunteers that help to promote it. So about 1,000 events are being held in that regard in order to use a systematic approach and answer the question of what topic we cover. We decided to establish a digital platform, and we believe that its establishment is a new level in improving financial literacy. Today, the platform established is an educational resource that brings together experts and the audience. Well, at the same time, it's a tool that makes it possible to control how efficient the work in improving financial literacy is. Why is it so useful for the population? Well, it has a it offers uh, certain information, educational materials that are divided in eight uh, groups. We gave them very easy names, uh, money, insurance, uh, fraud, and so on. And uh, each uh, topic uh, covers specific issues. As a regular basis, uh, we hold uh, educational events uh, in uh, all 34 municipal units. Who takes part in this uh, Events. Uh, I have a question. How do you see the end result uh, of uh, this uh, program in terms uh, of? Uh, I'm talking about financial literacy. Our not goal is our uh, goal is not uh, certainly to hold uh, just some educational events. Uh, what we want to do, we want uh, to make a step forward in order to change the situation with financial literacy. You are absolutely right. And uh, the third part is de dedicated to checking the knowledge, uh, assess the knowledge of uh, our participants. Uh, so there are questionnaires, tests that can be taken. And uh, then upon the results, uh, recommendations are given uh, to each participant. So certainly our goal is uh, to bring financial literacy in onto a new level. Besides, there is an opportunity to establish uh, an account for each user where he can track all information, what uh, events uh, he has taken uh, or she has taken for. And the second goal is uh, to establish monitoring in order to adjust that program and bring it up to the modern requirements to track the demand for such information and help to understand what shall be improved. There are three points which should be covered. Well, as for administration of the program, that's quite easy. There are organizers that are in charge of events and experts. The main important, the most important role is played by administrators. So in each municipal unit, uh, we have an organizer. We have seven uh, sites, and there are seven heads of such uh, sites. So they shape uh, the, our agenda, and uh, any user can get to our platform, get registered, and take part in any event he or she is interested in. To support uh, these activities, uh, there, are, there is uh, a methodology developed, and uh, we engage experts uh, in each event. Experts actually can uh, organize the events themselves if they think it's necessary. Then we uh, 
get the rating of the most, most uh, popular experts. Then we get the statistics that uh, shows uh, what uh, events uh, have been so popular, have been popular so far, and what how we could adjust our agenda. That's about the functionality. If you worry it's about what we want to do in the future, that actually goes in parallel with what Mikhail Mamutov was talking about in the first part of the session. We want to establish a module on investments, on private investments. Uh, it will include a theoretical part and a practical uh, exercises. We hope it's going to be a success, and uh, we'll certainly will be talking about the risks associated with these uh, activities. Uh, that's uh, it. I have a very short question. Are there any signals or signs uh, that prove an increasing interest uh, to financial market uh, from uh, the users? So that you know that uh, people do not just take an exam, but we see uh, an increasing interest uh, from those who want to open the accounts and uh, improve uh, the financial situation. If uh, we take statistics from our platform, we can say we can see positive dynamics. So we believe that certainly there is a demand for this platform. Okay, thank you very much. A question is for I have a question regarding uh, how it operates us. Uh, so, for example, you have a participant who took exam and uh, who gets some recommendation uh, regarding uh, what uh, courses uh, he or she might need. Well. And what what happens next? Well, actually, we have analytics uh, how many times a certain test uh, has been taken by a certain participant. But as for the uh, next step of uh, the practical use of the knowledge, uh, we don't have much information so far. Now I would like to give floor to Natalia Dukhanova, the Minister of Finance of uh, the region of Ulyanovsk. Natalia, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here to take part in this session. I would like, to, and I will tell you about our experience in uh, improving financial literacy. When we started as a project, uh, we understood uh, that the level of knowledge uh, was not satisfactory. There was a lack of financial content, educational programs in the region. We understood that uh, there was a lack of uh, efficient collaboration uh, between uh, municipal authorities and regional authorities, various uh, non-commercial organizations. And in that regard, the Ministry of Finance uh, decided to act as a coordinator in order to align uh, such cooperation. We established a center of financial literacy and uh, taxation culture that, uh, in fact, is a projection office, uh, project office. And uh, in January, we'll roll out a program of uh, a marathon of financial literacy that is going to be held within uh, one year. So at a monthly basis, uh, we hold events uh, that cover all target groups. Uh, the first day, uh, was, the first event was dedicated uh, to kids, uh, Second day uh, is uh, about, second event is about uh, school kids uh, and as a target audience uh, is uh, quite different as you understand. Are you, do you hold it online or offline? Both. Uh, we use uh, both approaches, approaches and uh, we uh, work together with the Ministry of Education and uh, it is very efficient. The third day uh, covers uh, the adult audience. So why do we call our center financial literacy and uh, taxation culture? Because we do not focus only on the financial literacy, but we also would like to promote uh, some tax reliefs uh, that uh, exist uh, without, within the legislation. So we work in order to make uh, the business uh, 
to bring the business into the white zone. So we uh, work, we invite uh, various organizations like Apura Russia or taxation experts who explain how you can uh, get a status of self-employed, how to use uh, certain tax uh, relief, reliefs, and as a Minister of Finance, so we certainly want uh, people's incomes uh, to go up. We also work uh, with the retirees, uh, with the elderly people. Mostly such events uh, are held uh, within uh, social service centers. That's what uh, we do. As uh, for cooperation uh, between uh, various uh, authorities, uh, we engaged uh, municipal authorities, regional authorities. We engaged educational centers, social centers, uh, orphanages, and uh, other organizations, uh, large corporations, social groups, uh, the Russian unit of use, uh, and uh, so on. So we engaged uh, the Bank of Russia. We actually have a very close cooperation with them. The taxation uh, service and uh, some financial institutions that act together in order to cover all uh, social groups, all population groups, uh, and uh, that uh, all those events are man uh, aimed at improving the efficiency, the financial literacy. We believe that financial education uh, shall be shall go hand in hand uh, with uh, the participatory budgeting. We want to engage uh, into financial education more members. Natalia, is this model already working so uh, you can get uh, feedback uh, on uh, how efficient it is? Yes, uh, certainly, certainly it's been uh, implemented uh, at uh, many municipal units. And uh, as far as I believe, uh, the number of beneficiaries in the last five years, uh, well, I don't remember the precise figure, but it is significant. What uh, conclusions? Uh, we have, uh, we have made uh, so the client centric uh, customer center approach uh, has to be used uh, the service provided shall be at a very high level and uh, all population groups shall be involved so those are our key conclusions uh, thank you very much natalia please take a seat svetlana makovskaya the minister the minister of uh, education of the krasnoyarsk region we have representatives of financial institutions before you represent educational bodies. So tell us how do you distribute uh, responsibilities in order to improve financial literacy? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to dwell on the system of uh, qualification, of upgrading qualifications. Talking about achievements of our region in terms of financial literacy, I can say, I, I would like to tell you our understanding of uh, this uh, strategy. On one hand, we see that population, including young people, does not want uh, to take any responsibility in financial risks. Until recently, we did not uh, have best many, many practices in order to educate uh, people in the uh, financial field. In order to eliminate uh, this uh, gap in the knowledge, by the initial initiative of uh, the Minister of Finance of uh, Krasnoyarsk region, we carried out uh, two educational prog programs in order to develop uh, you know, financial literacy of the pop local population, we established a regional center of financial literacy and developed a model of financial literacy. The main idea of that uh, model is to carry out cooperation among a uh, network of partners uh, 
social organizations, universities, business structures, uh, various uh, ministries uh, and departments. That uh, really ch has changed even the understanding of what uh, of the term qualification upgrades, qualifications. We decided to extend uh, the field of education so that our teachers uh, could uh, improve uh, their knowledge in finance. We engage them in uh, active in various events, and uh, we help uh, to shape uh, their own practice in order to get some experience, uh, get assessed, and uh, take the best use of it. Today, about 70 educational practices uh, have been developed uh, by our teachers and uh, have been used. Talking about educational programs uh, aimed at uh, families uh, and population in general, in general uh, our least, latest initiative was a financial festival that was aimed uh, at uh, families. So we engaged uh, lots of families uh, in the in the festival, in the work of the festival. We mentioned today about uh, various monitorings uh, carried out by a number of institutions. In 2020, we also monitored uh, how efficient are the programs of uh, improving financial literacy. We did it together with the Institute of Strategy and Development uh, of Educational System. As a result, uh, we can say we actually uh, carried out a poll of our graduates in order to assess their financial knowledge. So we tested more than 5,000 graduates, and the results showed that 39% of students have uh, a medium level of knowledge, of financial knowledge, and about 30% have a very low understanding of how finance work, works. So they actually are financially illiterate. So in that regard, we see there is room for improvement. Uh, we have to focus uh, on uh, students, on teachers. At the end, uh, answering your question, what is so special about our program, I can say that the original model of financial literacy is uh, to achieve a synergetic effect via the uh, events uh, that uh, we carry out uh, that will make it possible to shape a new uh, to shape best uh, practices uh, and uh, use them at the regional level well thank you very much i have a question it's not rocket science to understand that people when people do not see uh, that something is useful, they are not motivated to do it. We fight for financial literacy. However, people don't understand that this is in their own interest. They don't want to, to, to learn. It's probably not interesting for them. We don't explain them in the right way that it is in their own interest, that it concerns their own welfare, wellness, wellness. Answer, the practices that we elaborate, they should be modern and interesting and involving. We try to do the, to organize their activities which are engaging and involving. If we take the, uh, the material which uh, uh, was used 20 years ago, it will not interest children. Interjection. We are too few to fight. Once we are more humorous, we will get uh, more success. Question. Fight against whom? Answer, no, oh, not against, for financial literacy. Question. It's financial forum. And financial literacy is one of the key issues. We 
started uh, the agenda with financial literacy, then uh, panel discussion com comprised this topic as well. Now it's we have only started, and we have two days more to work with regional practices. This day will be considered an historic day. Today we have some adopted documents. In, in some regions of Russia, there are some practices, some real experience already achieved and elaborated. We need to use this experience and practices. And we need to take that into account. Larissa Kalinchenko, uh, Minister of Finances in the Stavropol region. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. My uh, topic is different. It is called Info informational campaign in the field of financial literacy. How should it be carried out? If we take our regional experience, I'll tell you. We started with sociological research. We wanted to find out which, get, which age category lacks financial knowledge. We wanted to understand what exactly we needed to explain to school children, to grown-ups, to elderly people. And the question was the following. Which is the channel of communication that you use the most often? Young people said Instagram, elderly people said uh, printed press. Once we understood it, we, we combined two of those answers and we uh, understood that we need to inform all the people about financial fraud from printed press pages. We need to consider the age structure of the population in that particular region. 30% in our region are retired people. We took that into account as well uh, to find out which press to use and which material and which content to apply. We considered it important who would talk about financial literacy. Experts and their talking heads, that's one thing, but we decided to turn to journalists. And these journalists uh, spoke not the complicated official language, but simple language. We organized some master classes in in the nature um, uh, with barbecue, with uh, funny activities. Next year, we uh, organized other seminars with more profound approach. The following year, we mm, organized a contest among journalists, printed press, internet, television. And the prizes were very attractive. So within these three years, we uh, gathered a pool of journalists who write about financial literacy. And we do not pay them for that because they are interested in it and they know the subject. First, first years, we paid them. We edited their articles. We wanted to... Uh, check whether the message um, is conveyed. But today, no, we don't pay anymore. We have already a pool of journalists and we have a number of friendly mass media. What about television? We have six channels which are mm, watched by the majority of our people and we and we implement videos of 30 seconds as average 
on such and such topic. Videos are about sources of reliable information. For example, if you have such a problem, go there. There is another channel on which we have twice a week a 15 minutes um, program. And in, this, in these programs, the material is presented in a simple way. And we also have Vegetarian Car Company where we participate. We have audio materials on radio stations which inform citizens about financial literacy. And they, uh, this information includes websites with reliable information. Internet, that's clear. The be it's the best friend of all young people. For our young people, we have contact a group. We have mm, uh, official website. But we also tried one new thing. We got involved. We created uh, like a series or comic book with characters, cartoon characters, and we post these short stories in our Instagram page. Web officials' Instagram is often visited. That's why we publish uh, in a funny in a funny manner such series pictures, uh, like a comic book. Inform affordable, in accessible information is something that we need to organize in the city. We have informational screens in, in the streets, in the in the central square, and on these screens we demonstrate our videos connected to the financial literacy. Multifunctional centers work as well, and there we also place booklets with different subjects treated. We also organized, we created a video without sound, uh, visual information for those who are interested. So we also want to come to railway station and airports and introduce our videos there as well. But I found out that they are not very interested. Uh, they want us to pay for this social information. Question, I'll uh, contact RGD and uh, other transportation facilities. I'll, I'll tell them. I, I, I hope we will, we will get to an agreement. Answer, yeah, we have already some videos without sound. Question to everybody. Can we uh, gather a bank of solutions like video material, booklets, and others so that it, it becomes our national resource. If it is RGD, a uh, transportation company, let it be not only in Stavropol region, but in all regions. So let's introduce these videos in different uh, destination trains. This information is useful for everybody. So you can place these videos in other platforms where television may be included. And people uh, may give feedback on these videos. What is the most popular uh, video, the most read booklet, and so on and so forth. Answer. Our approach has to keep to keep this informational campaign our approach is creative we communicate with journalists and we also 
uh, try to make this information in a, in a shape which would be very user-friendly for our population. Question. Thank you for your remarks. Ilya Brunstein, I give the floor to you. Minister of Education of the Moscow region. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I understood uh, what the organizer wanted to achieve. We mm, alternate uh, education and finances. And, well, 1st of September is the day of knowledge. Well, I, and probably it's time to, to celebrate the day of financial workers. Well, it's true that we all work together at an intersection. You mentioned this word synergy, and I would like to mention another word, ecosystem. These words are very close in meaning. These are means to join our effort and to achieve a common result. At the beginning, we spoke about healthy lifestyle, about literacy. What does it mean, and how does it form? We can talk about competencies, about models of education. But let's take the simplest model. First, the knowledge, then uh, the competence, then the skill. This is how we uh, build up our education, our system of education. In our region, we have one million of school children. This is a rather big community of people who are very soon will be able to be, to use their own finances. And they need to know how to use their money wisely and not to fall into a trap of scammers. Can people be protected from the scammers? How to form knowledge about financial literacy, educate and involve. Starting this year, we start a new project in 300 schools. We do not think uh, in years from January to December. We think about school years. So many and school children will be involved in these projects dedicated to financial literacy. You can read the information on the slide. I will not repeat it. So you can see our partners, the main uh, journals and uh, portals which help us achieve our goal. This is the, the project organized till the year of the school year till the end of the school year now we have different contests for school children and you can see that on the slide that our school children participate in these contests actively and the results are impressive what can we do to attract everybody so that the family helps so that teacher contributes. Yes, we need to talk about it. We need informational support. This informational support works in every channel. It's television and so on and so forth. And and we have one interesting channel. It is called Obrazovanie in Moscovia, Education of the Moscow Region. You, you can go and see. In this channel, we talk about educational programs, but not only. We also talk about necessary skills, about different cases, about measures of social support. Because this channel is read and watched by children and parents. You know, children, uh, children can ask. Uh, mommy and Teddy, we are going to receive uh, 10,000 rubles as a social support. What are we going to do with it? So what we want to achieve is the ability to, to, 
to use the system. The system is called a Map of Talents of the Moscow Region. It allows children from the seventh year of the school and on, it allows to pass the test and to get oriented in the world of jobs. What jobs are in demand? What professions are needed? And where the child can realize his or her potential? What programs of additional education there are? If a child wants to become a program developer, he knows and he or she knows that in in the city of Korolev, he or she can find the right education. And in this portal, he will be offered other, other options, the faculty and other trainings on the subject he or she chose and other case studies prepared by Coca-Cola and the non-companies uh, for school children in order to uh, improve their skills which will be necessary in their future jobs. So all in all, this is what uh, our project is about or, or from the um, educational side. And I need to mention as well that we work closely with financial ministry and we, uh, we work with the project of participatory budgeting. We try to involve schools and um, other educational centers and we hope that our projects will be implemented and our program will be a success. Thank you, Ilya, for your remarks. And now I give the floor to Mikhail uh, from Tomsk region. Уважаемые коллеги, спасибо большое за возможность представить наш опыт Томской области. Наверное, если коротко, вот Андрей, как вы просили, да, вот в чем заключается какая тут? Dear colleagues, let me represent uh, the experience of uh, the Tomsk region. What is so special about it? Well, we get a cumulative effect on financial literacy, and uh, we uh, issue a financial product uh, oriented at the population. So what uh, problems do we face and what challenges uh, do we have to address? When we want to improve financial literacy, well, first of all, Today it has been mentioned many times there is a quite a low level of investment literacy but a very high interest from the population in, in the investment field. We have been inv issuing this product for 19 years and we see the following friend. At first, uh, those who approached our project, they didn't understand anything about investment, anything about finance, but step by step they improved uh, their knowledge and then they would enter the financial investment market understanding what they want to achieve on the open market, so getting experience, and, but they got experience on our protected uh, financial products, with our protected, protected financial products. Then uh, we carried out a social uh, research and uh, we saw another challenge. I'm talking about uh, shaping a behavioral model in order to increase our people's savings. Uh, by social polling, we see that uh, owners of bonds uh, think t twice as much compared to the general population. So people do understand that, that there is a need to save up money and they know how to save the money. The next question is uh, how do you regard challenges by 2030? A low engagement in social projects. Well, thanks uh, to uh, positioning of uh, such uh, bonds load, uh, we show how population can be involved in the social finance. They do understand that they can purchase uh, governmental bonds uh, that will give you certain income and uh, that will make it possible to improve infrastructure at the regional level. 
Next uh, thing is uh, miscellany and aggressive promotion of low quality of financial products. What uh, do we see? Lack of trust on the financial markets. So we established an ecosystem, so we integrated that product into the financial literacy project. So we help our people to get a track. So everybody has uh, their personal account, and uh, there you can track uh, your financial flows uh, depending on your investment. And then we offer to shape or uh, to set uh, certain goals in a long-term perspective. Therefore, with uh, this experience, uh, people understand how to behave on the financial market, how to act. Another problem is a low level of financial and digital knowledge. Why do we believe uh, it is important? We actually we created a structure, a special uh, structure, and uh, thanks to the Bank of Russia, we established uh, a special marketplace uh, of uh, uh, stocks that uh, helped to roll out that project. Today, uh, any citizen can buy uh, securities uh, at home through Gosuslugi service, so we help to improve uh, financial uh, literacy and uh, g uh, gain some income. We also introduced uh, some regional initiative, initiative uh, that is called the uh, internal model of investors. Certainly, uh, we do understand that any financial product, product cannot be protected for 100 percent, but at least uh, our 19-year experience make it possible to choose uh, the right uh, tools, uh, to choose the right securities. Uh, so for 19 years, uh, we have been paid regularly on our bonds, uh, uh, interest on our bonds, and our people do trust it. So we uh, created another original product. We have interface uh, platform. We have uh, some regulative uh, assistance, uh, and we have a special application. So we did a special project that makes it possible for the regions uh, to apply our experience uh, locally in order to boost uh, liter financial literacy. And a few, unfortunately, you're running out of time, sorry. Okay, so a few words about our experience. Again, we've been operated for 19 years, uh, so we helped uh, local population to uh, calculate money. People are used to getting additional income, and uh, the money uh, they get as an interest, uh, they are, they, it, it is invested again. So previously people had no idea how to save up money, but today uh, they not just save up money, but they also invest and earn more. Our next step is to engage uh, more people into the program. We expect uh, a higher level of financial security, better understanding of financial instruments among the population, and the initiative budgeting to zero, engagement of people's fund in uh, implementation of infrastructure projects. We talk about uh, a small, rather small part, but if people are engaged into social in initiatives, it's going to be a win-win situation. Today, to, together with the Ministry of Finance, uh, we develop a methodology that can be applied regionally, and uh, that uh, could be very useful for other regions. Well, thank you very much. I have a comment. We are talking about guidelines, right? Not about some decree. Well, thank you very much. The figure you mentioned, 6,000 people, you mentioned it's uh, less than 1%, so, which means that a very small part of uh, Tomsk population is engaged in the investment. Well, certainly 
We're talking about household, not about citizens. So certainly not uh, every uh, member of a family is going to invest themselves. And we talk about active accounts. OK, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, so let's get on screen the results of our voting. And uh, then I would like to conclude. I would like to give floor to Anatoly Gavrilenko. Anatoly. You've been on the financial market for quite a long time since uh, it appeared in the USSR and then in Russia. Well, well uh, the ship, when it actually appeared, it, does, it doesn't contradict uh, the phrase uh, when uh, you shaped it, when you established it. What about, could you share your focus in uh, 10 years' time? What will happen to financial literacy? And what is uh, the difference uh, between uh, the demand uh, in 1990s uh, when the financial market uh, literally did not exist? Compared to the current situation, 30 years later, when people regard it as an opportunity to improve their incomes. And, Andrea, within 30 years, people changed. Well, if you would like to stand, you're very welcome to take the floor over there. Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate you with your achievements. So, so today is the day of literacy. So dear colleagues, literacy is uh, education. So I would like to congratulate all of you, those who work on literacy, because today is the International Day of Literacy. I think uh, this uh, holiday has been celebrated for 55 years, but we do understand that literacy is uh, everything. So in 10 years uh, life, what will happen? Very often we will understand that uh, the world is changing much faster than we can estimate it in our ability to understand the changes. So today's uh, new reality is uh, uncertainty and lack of any focus. Well, quite unexpected. The second thing, the role of the government is uh, to get stronger and the government will never admit it, but the government will understand that it's uh, acting too fast introducing digital technologies. So technologies have uh, to be based on the common sense. You shouldn't intrude on the private uh, life of people without thinking how efficient it's going to be. So such risks may slow down the development of the country, the economy, and so on. And besides, it is impossible to develop without active support of the whole society. Otherwise, there won't be any developments. By 2022, 2025, there will be popular horizontal cooperation. So we will see that coordination will get stronger. We will see formation of various partnerships and so on. Ministry of Finance, and Ministry of uh, Education and uh, so on. You see they all get together in order to get better results. Well, what is valuable about the current trends? What is the problem? 85 regions. It actually, it's a lot of ex expertise, a lot of knowledge. Moscow has to listen and uh, take uh, the best of your best practices. I also believe that uh, in one year time, about one million uh, participants uh, of the pension fund uh, will get engaged. And you did not. Uh, of the trade unions, uh, they are conductors of financial literacy, uh, literacy and uh, they uh, actually inv consist of millions of people. Yes, if we talk about scaling up those projects I heard about libraries, I believe in one or two years' time, thousands of libraries, and we have 5,000 libraries at least in Russia, they are going 
to become the real uh, temples of education. Let's uh, take use this uh, name for them. In 10 years' time, we should think about more important uh, issues uh, for human beings. People want to have uh, new jobs. They want uh, to be employed, engaged. So we need to create new jobs, especially at the regional level, in order to achieve uh, equal and uh, development in all Russian regions. For, for us, it is important to stay human beings after all. So first, uh, the person has to be at the center of, uh, of everything we do. In the next uh, two years, uh, the social chamber we will establish uh, with the Ministry of Finance, with the Bank of Russia, a council in, uh, aimed at introduction of digital technologies. And uh, it should uh, engage uh, people that are not uh, experts on finance, in finance, uh, and uh, such people should explain what these technologies are aimed for, how can they help us, and so on and so forth. I believe in two or three years' time we will get technologies uh, with a human face, not just it, it is, uh, today. In two years, I believe that more, many members of the financial market will uh, vote on the principles of uh, responsible financing. Do you know that today, today, about uh, 3,000 companies, corporations globally signed upon those principles? I asked Sberbank and uh, there are just uh, a few, very few companies in Russia who signed those principles, but they run 103 uh, trillion dollars. Can you imagine uh, they manage huge money, they manage uh, the global money, 303 trillion dollars. That's uh, what man was mentioned as a plenary recession. This is a uh, very serious. It's not just a political choice, because choice shall be proper. We should uh, focus on data. Data is going to be the first uh, in terms of priorities. 90% of the companies promised by 2025 to take part to address uh, issues of sustainable development. I hope that as a central bank, uh, we will come to, uh, to we would come in terms to it. They uh, do not listen to us today. They do not hear us. I actually I heard uh, they say we our development is quite sustainable. But those who go to international market, uh, they are uh, understand how important it is. In 2021, we will have information uh, databases uh, that uh, will protect personal data, that those data can be used uh, for analysis uh, if possible. By 2026, uh, people's uh, literacy, financial literacy will finally get better. There will be volunteers representatives of financial companies uh, that will help to people to understand financial issues. So we actually want the product of financial uh, product of literacy be rolled out at the national level, but health is more important than financial literacy. So I believe that financial literacy is the first sign of understanding that our people have to be literate in general. In financial volunteer will be responsible for knowledge and information that he or she shares with others. And volunteers uh, will be those uh, who share just some knowledge. Uh, volunteers. They won't read your lectures. They would just share the knowledge that they already have within 20 or 15 years. 
and uh, I heard uh, lots of interesting initiatives today. Great experience uh, you shared with us. I hope that we can scale up such initiatives uh, nationally. The highest motivation is self-motivation indeed. Uh, by 2024, we are going to have at least 100,000 volunteers minimum. In 2021, financial, digital budget, investment and inflation literacy will be improved. If we want uh, people to act, uh, we have to explain people what the inflation is about, because nobody understands that. I mean, I'm talking about uh, population in general. Anatoly, you actually you run out of time. I don't mind. I just can go home. OK, let me finish. I have just a few sentences to go. Financial literacy, I talk about succession culture. For the two year, for two years, I've been saying that financial literacy is uh, not uh, what uh, tax authorities are interested in, because those who are financially literally, they pay fewer tax taxes. So, starting from the first grade, children will be taught that taxation is a price we pay to live in, in, in a civilized society. How she or he is going to pay taxes is another story. We will learn people to regard the taxes seriously, but they will focus on tax reliefs. So I don't know about any deductions, so I pay taxes in full. I also pay my taxes in full, even as own I know a lot about tax reliefs. Well, uh, let's forget about it. Well, I actually get a pension and I ask, uh, what can I give this pension to my child, to my daughter? And nobody uh, wants to answer, but for the state, it's an opportunity. There's no problem, and so on and so forth. For example, they uh, paid me uh, these uh, 10,000 rubles. What should I do with it? I cannot um, uh, return it to Mr. Putin, and so on. In all the students' books, In all school books, there should be uh, problems like this. Mother pays that many rubles as taxes. Father as many question, how much does the family pay? So such tasks, such problems should be solved by school children. So, We need to award people only if they respect fiscal legislation. If the person is a good taxpayer, uh, he or she may be eligible for awards. Thank you for your remarks. I forgot one more thing. Take a seat. And, uh, mention, and said, in the year 2022, we will take the train of financial literacy. We will go to every city and town. We will speak in front of regular people. And I invite you to take this train. Question. I will speak for one minute. I was uh, listed as well in Pskov. Every mass media 
are waiting for my presentation. Can you introduce yourself? Answer. I'm from Pskov. It's where Russia starts. And my suggestion is start with us. Russia starts where we are. Russia is Pushkin. Russia is military forces. I am older than 80 years, and 60 years of experience I have in the field of social work. What's your name? My name is Svetlana. Svetlana Milnichuk, city of Pskov. I I was shy to speak about this uh, uh, in front of this audience, but I thought that you were were not emotional, that you uh, cared only about money. But no, I see that we all can do a lot. Social organizations can do a lot. I represent the union of retired people in Russia. We, these people represent already a community. We have a list of them. So these people, among them, there are 2,000 uh, elderly people who come and go and study in universities so-called third age. These people are very interesting to work with. I have my partners who ask me to come and to speak in this forum. Sberbank came to our region and uh, taught us how to use ATMs. Now, Bank, Bank Rece works with us. Our region is not very connected. Only 60% of people have internet connection. Uh, Bank Rece uses printed booklets and throws them into box, uh, post post boxes so people can read the information. Every week, uh, literature, information about financial literacy is published where uh, all the people can read them. You mentioned here the fact uh, that how to motivate people, you said, and I would answer, probably you need to force people, like we forced our children to start reading. This kind of violence is acceptable. So thank you for your help and for your contribution. I am impressed by the atmosphere here in this forum. You are also uh, so impressive. Thank you, Svetlana. No, well, uh, violence doesn't work that well, so probably let's adopt a more gentle approach. So let's look at the results of our vote. It's mm, just curious. It may not be representative because we are not uh, many. Let's have a look at it. Let's go to the final part. We have two Mikhail's to present. First, Mikhail Mahmoud, the question to you, what is your idea of best model of financial literacy? What should it look like in terms of investment uh, accounts, broker accounts? Probably you have already an ideal pattern which works in the world and we, which we should adopt. Answer, very provocative question. 
view the fact that we have only five minutes to go. I'll try to answer. I'm really impressed by the uh, final speakers, Svetlana and Anatoly. These are really good examples of healthy financial literacy uh, in present. Question. You can start selling tickets to your train of financial literacy. Answer, yeah, I, I suppose people you know, wanted to find uh, these tickets. I saw them take their smartphone and look. So financial literacy should be reflected in the activity of the regions. If so, we will be able to reach up to the whole population. We need to lay a foundation for different levels of communication. We have regional councils. We have programs at regional and federal levels. And we, with my colleague Mikhail, we call that a, a framework. This is how financial literacy develops and spreads. But there should be place for flexibility, for creativity, for initiative. We hear and see every time we communicate with people new practices, new activities, things that people do in their regions in order to improve their level of life. So this experience sharing is a good practice. People need air to breathe. Financial literacy need, also needs air to develop and spread. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we are going to organize regional uh, activities um, in which we are going to consider different regional practices. And it's a good idea to accumulate them in a certain database. A certain mechanism of uh, social initiative support should be elaborated. There is a context of social support. But this is only a start. We need synergy. Two plus two is more than four. That's the synergy. Because we attract scientists, experts, uh, officials and all together can achieve a much bigger result. One by one, we cannot achieve such impressive results. One of my colleagues said, we need to understand what the audience needs and via which mechanism this result may be achieved. And we need to convey this signal to every audience. As the bank receive, we try to follow this pattern. We have regional offices everywhere, and they are active. They cooperate with Ministry of Education and others. They help people to protect themselves. I'll just uh, give you some details about formats radio, television, public transport, trains, buses, and different projects for the most vulnerable categories of people, uh, orphans, uh, people with disability, and so on and so forth. So multitude of formats gives us positive result in terms of coverage. The system of support of social initiatives is like a doping, a adrenaline injection, which s says to people, go and create. This will allow us to scale up the whole system up to the scale to the whole country, of the whole country. So. This is how we create the whole system, region by region. And I have 
another comment to make. What about the future and what about the investments that Andrea asked me in the beginning? world is changing rapidly. Our consumers change. 6,000 bondholders. They are all different and they can change the society. It's important to consider and we encourage the growth of investment activity. But we warn you, people need to be aware, need to be competent when entering this field in order to transform their uh, savings into investment. So this movement should be uh, competent, aware, and progressive. That's why we have different uh, educational programs with the stock market. For example, that's one thing. And the other thing is that we have different strategies. You know, uh, this one of the strategies is when a person should spend uh, several hours a day to control their assets. But we want to change this strategy. Ninety. Uh, 90% uh, of money should be dedicated to indexes, to uh, uh, trusted management, so that every uh, uh, someone else is managing your money. This is the way how you can earn and not lose. So these are the models that we want to implement. Thank you, dear colleagues, for your attention and for being positive during this session. Thank you, Mikhail Mamut. Mikhail Kotyukov, the floor is yours. Answer, yeah, I will be brief because it's already the end. Thank you all for being active, for being engaged. Thank you for your participation in this fight. We're going to learn some new tools which will help us even more in this fight. I'm sure that our project will be a success. I'm not going to draw you a success image, what it will look like in 10 years. It will probably not be fair. But what I'm sure and what I stand for is that the person should be at the heart of our approach finding different channels for different categories of population should be used. These channels should be comfortable and understandable. They should be e easily accessed. This is uh, what I invite you to do. We will find opportunities to discuss. I hope that it will be easier for us to to come and see each other locally. And I hope that we will get, or that we will establish good relations and dialogues with pension fund and other institutions. What is important is to inform grown ups, those who work, to inform them about financial literacy, to give them safe tools to enable them to invest and to uh, profit from their savings. When you invest, you, you can benefit from your own uh, money and then in the future you will uh, it will return even more. So we will need to educate people uh, that there is always risk. So if they offer you something, something free, it's a scam. Question. You're right. People are willing to believe in fairy tales. So answer, we need to, 
we need to educate people to uh, let them know that if you want to earn money in the financial market, you need to be trained professionally in the field. If you have some savings, so probably it's better to trust professional investors who can guarantee you a certain amount of income. Question, at least they can explain to you if it goes wrong. Speaking not into the microphone. Dear friends, I'm very happy that we're starting today. I am grateful to you. And tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we are continuing and going progressively on. I wish you good success in our strategy of financial literacy and in building up healthy financial lifestyle. It's the end of our session. Thank you for being there. Question, and can I take a photo of you just to make sure that all of you take the financial literacy train? All right, let's take a, a picture of all of us, and then when the train is launched, we'll see each other again. Не надо надписывать, да?